Avengers, assemble! Oh man, I don't have any Avengers to assemble with me. Jimmy, go hire me some Avengers! Go do it now! What is up guys? My hair is all messed up from the mask, but you know, we're not going to mind that. And uh, if you're too lazy to read the thumbnail, and you're too lazy, uh, too, too lazy to see the thumbnail, and too lazy to read the title, and I uh, didn't notice my intro, this is another Avengers video! Yeah! Because I'm such a Marvel fan, and I gotta do all these um, Avengers videos. Blech. So, um, after I did my discussion video that I did last week, uh, on Saturday, I went and I saw Endgame, and boy, was it good. It was probably the most, it was probably the most awesomest, that's not even the word awesomest, but, you know, I'm going to use it, because in my definition, it is a word. It was the most awesomest Marvel movie they have ever made, but also the saddest. So, yeah. I will admit, I cried, like a big baby, that I truly am. And, uh, but I wasn't the only one. Almost the whole movie theater cried. And in this video, you're going to find out why, if you haven't seen it already. Warning, this, uh, this, this, um, what, what, is, what am I doing right now? A video. I can't speak to it. This video does contain spoilers, so if you have not seen the movie and you don't want me to spoil it for you, uh, then don't watch it. Exit out right now, because this is spoilers of the movie Endgame. Okay, yeah, and also before we begin guys, please don't forget to give a like on this awesome Avengers video um, Or on any, on any other video, comment down in the comment section down below And of course if you have not subscribed to the Trafter Gamer channel Please do so if you're not already, become one of the Trafter dudes I don't know <laughs> So um, Avengers, Avengers Endgame was really good and It picks up right where Infinity War left off so, like, you still have Tony Stark and Nebula, and the Star-Lord ship, and they're stuck in space, and then Captain Marvel comes and saves them, and they drop them off at Avengers HQ, where uh, Tony Stark and Captain America finally see each other in 1980, and like, four years, whenever, whatever your Civil War was, and so, yeah, that was awesome, yeah, and then, so... And then they get the crazy idea of going to stop Thanos, who used the stones again. So they go and they find Th the planet Thanos uh, left off of the Infinity War. And uh, Thanos tells them that, that they destroyed the stones. I'm speaking way too fast. And Thanos, just, Thanos said, oh, I, I used the stones to destroy the stones. And then they're like, oh, what? And Thor got mad and he f sliced Thor's head clean. Uh, Thor sliced his own head off. But Thor just goes and he slices Thanos' head clean off of his body. <laughs> and then and then they're like and everyone all the Avengers are like, what'd you do that for? And he sits there and he goes, I went for the head. <laughs> that was one that, that was a good part. And then uh, suddenly it goes five years in time. Five years have passed since the events of Infinity War, which uh well in our in our year, you know that's a bit off because it's only been one year. But you know, whatever the Russo brothers want to do, they want to do. But anyways, five years goes by and the Avengers split up. Captain America actually shaved and he has his old hairdo back. And uh, Thor went off and Hulk went off and Tony went off and Tony actually has a daughter now because they talked about having a kid in, in Infinity War and they did and. So Tony has his uh, Tony and Pepper and his daughter. They all sit and they all live in their own little house. Hulk has gone away. Thor has gone away. And so the only people left at HQ are Rhodey, Black Widow, and Cap. I think. Oh yeah, and in the beginning I forgot Hawkeye. You know who retired and could, and for his family. His family withered away when Daniel snapped his fingers. It didn't show it in Infinity War, but at the beginning of Endgame, Daniel's uh, Hawkeye's family disappeared. And so, yeah, and then he was like, what, what? And then it ended, and it moved on to Tony and Nebula. And so, yeah, so the Hawkeye is now going around and killing random people in different places, and Black Widow and Rhodey have been trying to track him down for a while, but they're always too late. But, uh, yeah, and so they're all moping. They're all moping about the events in Infinity War and how everyone um, withered away. And uh, Cap started his own support group, which, you know, I kind of 
found ironic because in Captain America Winter Soldier, uh, his friend um, Falcon, or Sam, um, who lived right in Infinity War, had his own support group. So I think Cap did that because of Falcon, and that's what went through my head, using my Marvel know-how. But he had his own support group of some of the people who joined, and they were talking about stuff like that. And um, so then I get this crazy idea to bring everybody back by using the stones. Well, uh, well, obviously the stones are destroyed. So then they get this crazy time travel idea. But no, none, none of the original Avengers came up with the time travel idea. Scott Lang, uh, if you've seen Man in the Wasp, he got stuck in the quantum realm. Um, a mice stepped on the quantum realm button, so he zapped out. Scott Lang uh, it was, comes back and he's like, what? You realize five years has passed. And then to, to him... I think he said it was five hours. So instead of five years with everybody else, for him, who was in the quantum realm, it was five hours. Cause, and he's going on, he was telling Cap all this stuff. Because he went, he went to go see his daughter Cassie, who was like a teenager now. Man, five years. So much can happen in five years, right? And so he goes and he sees Cassie. And then he goes to the Avengers HQ trying to figure out what's going on. And the Avengers fill him in on what was going on with Thanos and stuff. And so, he was like, well, can't we use time travel, you know, to go get the stones and bring everybody back? And everybody was like, whoa. But they had no one, none of them were smart enough to do it. So, of course, they go to good old Tony Stark, you know, who's just chilling in this house. And uh, Tony refuses to help him. Says it's not possible. And so, the Avengers like, ugh, Tony, the one time you could help us out, you refused to. I mean, but if I was going through what Tony went through, get stabbed in the stomach by Thanos... Almost dying, and then going back home, man, I'd want to stay out of that stuff too. I just wanted to stay and you know, chill with my family, so if I understand why Tony refused. So instead, Scott Lang, Captain America, and Black Widow, they go to see Bruce Banner. And Bruce Banner is different. And f uh, five years ago, when they killed Thanos, he still had his sh shape in Infinity War. You know, he still had his human form, he used to use the Hulkbuster. Now, it was a mix between Bruce Branner and Hulk mixed into one. So he was medium sized, not as big as the Hulk, he was medium sized. And, uh, he, uh, he wasn't human sized, he wasn't Hulk sized, he was in the middle basically. And he was all green and he still had Bruce's face and he still had Bruce's voice and he still had Bruce's smarts. So it was Hulk. And Bruce Banner mixed into one, and it made it really, fr he was actually really funny about it. They went, uh, so they went to him, and then they were like, oh, no, yeah, st and Hulk didn't think it was possible. Well, he thought it was possible, and he, was ac he actually wanted to do it. And so then, I can't remember why, but they went to Thor, and Thor has changed since five years. He had his long hair back, he had his, uh, he had a beard twined up and going down, and he was chubby. I mean... I mean, his Mars glue form in Infinity War was now back to, he was like, who, who's a chubby, I don't know, but he was chubby, he, like, his stomach stuck out, and you could tell. And so they went to Thor, and Thor refused to help him, he just wanted to lay back and drink beer and play Fortnite with Korg and Meek from Thor Ragnarok, they were back. And so, um, so actually they do get the time travel thing to work, Tony figures it out. Uh, after tucking his daughter in, he says, I love you, uh, he, his daughter tells him, I love you 3,000. Keep that quote in mind. I love you 3,000 that his daughter told Tony. Um, which is really cute. I, I want aww, because, you know, ta Tony has a daughter and stuff like that. And it was really cute. And he goes downstairs and he figures out the time travel thing. So he goes to the Avengers and he tells them that. And so then they made it. They, they actually make a time travel machine. They actually do it. And then they use Scott Lang as a test subject, and he shrinks to him, uh, he uh, transforms into an old man, then a baby, then his actual self, and it was really funny. And uh, it was really funny. So then they actually get it to work, and they go all the way back to the very first Avengers battle, which is really funny, because they realized that three of the Infinity Stones were in the same exact uh, uh, year and place in New York. Um, so. Let me think if I, the time stone, the space stone, was the space stone in the Tesseract? Yeah, the space stone was in the Tesseract, and the mind stone. Those three stones were in New York 
during the bat during the battle of New York in the first Avengers, and they figured that out. The space stone was in the Tesseract, which Loki, you know, stole and was using the power of the mist portal and thing. The mind stone was in Loki's scepter, and the time stone was at the Doctor Strange's place. But before his Doctor Strange, that old bald lady had it, and so they were all in the same place. And they realized that, so they went all. So three of them, actually no. Tony, uh, Tony, Steve, Hulk, no, 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 Hulk didn't go. Tony, Steve, and Ant-Man, they went to New York to get those three stones. Rhodey and Nebula went to Morag. If you don't know what Morag is, Morag is a planet that Star-Lord went first to in the very beginning of Guardians of the Galaxy to get that orb. So they went there, and then... And then Thor and Rocket, I forgot to mention Rocket, but he was in all this too. Thor and Rocket went back to Asgard to get the Aether. Because, uh, you know, back in 2014, no, what year was it? What year did Thor the Dark World come out in? 2014? Yeah, I think it was 2014. Uh, they, Asgard was still there, so they went back there and they went got Aether out of the, you know, Jane, who still had it. And so each one of them runs into problems. Captain America had to fight himself from 2012, so that went, that was cool, you know, Captain America versus Captain America. Um, Thor and Rocket had a big situation, because Thor saw his mom, and he got all mad, because his mom saw him, and they had a conversation, and Thor got his hammer back, because he was smart, and at the end he was like, and Rocket was like, what are you doing? And his mom was like, it takes a minute, and his hammer came back to him. So he brought his hammer back, so he has his hammer back and stuff, so now he does he have Stormbreaker, he has his hammer. He has, you know, so he's basically like a chubby badass. <laughs> it's the best way I can put it. A chubby badass. <laughs> and so that was their situation. Tony, Steve, and Ant Man situation was well. Um, Cap uh, Captain America, who had Loki scepter, ran into uh, First Avengers Captain America, and they fought. And so Tony Stark and Ant Man were sent to get the Tesseract. So when Tony got the Tesseract, the 2012 Hulk was smashed through a door because he was mad that he had to take the stairs instead of the elevator and blasted Tony backwards. And then Loki, who was in chains, picked up the Tesseract and, you know, evaporated it away. And then, yeah, and then Rhodey and Nebula's problem was the worst. Frickin', um, Thanos from the first Guardians of the Galaxy, um, or actually, actually say Nebula from First Guardians of the Galaxy Nebula. Now they her eye thing, you no know, connected. So Thanos could see, Thanos could see what the new Nebula was doing on Morag from the old Nebula. And so he's like, hmm, people from the future are trying to get my Infinity Stones. I must not let that happen. And so then he, in 2012, him. So basically, the Avengers pissed off the Thanos from the first. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. So when Rhodey gets the orb, he goes away, but Nebula doesn't in time, and Thanos gets her and stuff. And so when they all get the stones, they actually all get the stones because when um, Tony realized that Loki took the Tesseract, they go, uh, they, they're like, oh, well, there's only one other place where the Tesseract was at, which is locked in a shield compound. So they go there, and Tony found his dad. And Tony and his dad had this weird, long, awkward conversation. Which is, it was, it was actually kind of cool, because, you know, Tony finally got to meet his dad, but at the same time, you know, it's like, yeah, Captain America found Peggy from back then, and he stood there and he was like, come on, not really <laughs> like that, but that. So, the, yeah, eventually they get all the Infinity Stones, and the, the Iron Man makes his own Infinity Gauntlet, puts the stones in, and then Hulk goes, whoosh, and he snaps his fingers. Well, um... The old Nebula, uh, when Thanos took new Nebula, they sent old Nebula to disguise. There's new Nebula back, and yeah. So old Nebula opens back the portal back up, e even when the Avengers are back, you know, in the, in the present. And Thanos' ship just skyrockets from um, Avengers HQ into the air. And so when, after Hulk snap his fingers, Thanos just sends missiles and blow the place up. It was like the Mandarin in Iron Man 3. You no, know, Mandarin blew up Tony Stark's place. Thanos blew up Avengers HQ, but ten times worse than Iron Man 3. And so the Avengers are like, oh no! 
And so, like, so that, uh, so remember, like I said, they pissed off old Thanos because old Thanos wanted his Infinity Stone so he could do what he was going to do in Infinity War. It's really confusing. A lot of time travel, which makes it, makes it really cool. And so then, um, freaking, I can't speak today. Motherfucker, please excuse me. <laughs> so the Avengers suit up, uh, Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor, they go and they face Thanos, who's just chilling there. He's literally, he's legit sitting there on a rock, because he sent old Nebula to go get the Infinity Stones, which Hawkeye collected, because Black Widow found Hawkeye. And so they went, I completely forgot, Black Widow and Hawkeye went to, um, Vormir. Vormir, I, wherever the, um, Soul Stone was at, Black Widow died. So instead of Thanos throwing Gamora off her roof to, um, get the Soul Stone, Black Widow and Hawkeye had a fight of who would throw off the cliff, because both of them were suicidal. But Black Widow won, and she was like, SUICIDAL! And she hit the ground, and so she died to get the Soul Stone, so Hawkeye had it. And he came back, and he got stuck in, under all the HQ rubble with Hulk, Rhodey, and Rocket. They were stuck under the rubble, but Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor walk out, and they're, you know, they're, they're ready to fight Thanos again, especially Iron Man. I mean, I, mean, I bet Iron Man had some deep anger stored up in him. And so Hawkeye gets the Infinity Gauntlet, but has to fight the Nebulas. And then Hulk has to keep the Avengers HQ up so he could get Ant-Man, Rhodey, and Rocket out. So they're all busy. So that leaves the three main Avengers, the three awesome dudes, Iron Man, Rocket, and uh, Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor, to fight Thanos. They lose. But, uh, and then there's one, there's one part where Thanos is punching the thing out of Thor, and then, um, Thor had lost both of his things. But Mjolnir just... Now, the hammer, Mjolnir, just lifts and it punches Thanos across the face. And then, but Thor didn't do it. So me and the whole movie theater are like, what? And it zooms back and Captain America held the hammer in his fucking hand. He held the hammer in his fucking hand. I was like, oh shit, Thanos is so screwed now. That was basically what, you know, Bruce Banner said when in Infinity War. But yeah, Captain America holds a, th a hammer and a shield, and he goes up to Thanos, he's like, Bruh, bruh, you killed all my friends, bruh, bruh, uh, hammer shield badge, bruh. And so, yeah, and, Thor, and Thor's like, oh, I knew it, I knew you were worthy. And then, yeah, and stuff like that. And then, uh, so then Thanos keeps kicking, uh, Thanos uh, returns a favor by kicking Captain America's butt. And so that Captain America gets up, Iron Man and Thor, you know, Laying across the ground because they've been beat. Captain America gets up. Now, I could, I thought we we're gonna get, I could do this all day thing from him, but he didn't. He just stood up, and then so Thanos, he he's sitting there. He's like, "Oh, you guys are so screwed now." And then he has his whole Chitauri army and all the army from Infinity War and all the Chitauri from the first Avengers. They're all there, and then uh, his minions. From Infinity War, those other dudes that were sent to get the stones, they're back. And so they're like, uh, and so Captain America is standing there facing the whole army. And we're like, oh boy, what's going to go on? And then Falcon comes through, um, Falcon, uh, Falcon's voice comes through, um, Captain America's earpiece. And he's like, Cap, do you read me? And Captain America's like, what? And he's like, on your left. And he looks over and Doctor Strange is, you know, circle thing, it's there. And all of the Avengers and all of Black Panther's army that withered away, they all come rushing through. Uh, they all come rushing through um, Doctor Strange's teleport circle thingies. And Spider Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, Black Panther, Falcon, um, Wong, Doctor Strange himself. Wong is Doctor Strange's sidekick, if you didn't know. A whole bunch of other mystic dudes of Doctor Strange and all of the you know tribal dudes from Black Panther. Uh, they're all there, and Captain America's like, whoa! And then Pepper shows up in, his be in her own iron suit that Tony must have built for. And then uh, Gamora from uh, the first Guardians of the Galaxy was there. And Hope, she came back, and she's flying around the wasp suit. She gets up, she's like, oh, where am I? Where am I? And Speederman comes through, and he swings, and he lands, and the camera shows up to him to do a heroic pose. And yeah, and so then Iron Man and Thor come back, and then this 
this was like the best part. Captain America looks and he goes, Avengers, assemble! And so all the Avengers and all of Thanos' army go and they just do this great old battle. And Hawkeye, who had the Infinity Gauntlet, is in the battlefield. He tosses it to Black Panther, Black Panther tosses it to Spider-Man. And then Captain Marvel, who was in the whole movie, she left uh, after they went to kill Thanos. She left and went back to her planet. She comes back and she kicks Thanos' butt and Thanos punches her. And then it gets to the sad part. So Spider-Man drops Thanos' gauntlet. And so uh, Thanos tries to grab it, but Thor comes in, then Iron Man comes in. And so then Iron Man, it's it's another Thanos and Iron Man solo. They're fighting, and um, Thanos put the gauntlet on, and Iron Man comes up, and he's grabbing his gauntlet, and Thanos is like, Ugh, and Iron Man blocks it. So And Iron Man's trying to grab the gauntlet off, but Thanos pushes him off. And then Thanos, with the uh, Iron Man's gauntlet thingy, he goes, I am inevitable. <laughs> and it does nothing. No white screen, nothing. He goes, he looks, all of the Infinity Stones that were there when he put the glove on are gone. Guess where they are? Iron Man snatched him and he's trying to get the glove off. And he's standing there and he has his, and he's like this and he's absorbing the power of the Infinity Stones. And he goes, I am Iron Man. Boosh! Just like that. He snaps his fingers and white screen. Thanos' his army withers away and the Chitauri and all of them. Crazy creatures with us away, his minions with away, and then finally, Thanos himself goes to dust. He's bye bye. Iron Man fucking did it. I, I knew Iron. He made the sacrificial move in the first Avengers. He made the second. He made the sacrificial move in Endgame. And he lived through the first Avengers one. I don't know if I can say this again. If I break out into tears, don't judge me. Because I kind of jinxed myself when I did a discussion. <laughs> Iron Man didn't make it. He didn't. All the stones. Uh, when he did the stones, it withered up his arm. It did it to Hulk too, but he is gamer, so he lived. All of his, uh, the Infinity Stones, like, ruined, um, Tony's hand that he had up to his suit. And it got his face too. And so everyone comes over after, you know, Thanos and his army turned to dust. And, uh, uh, what was I going to say? I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> trying to hold back. Because like I said, I cried in the movie theaters and the whole movie theater cried with me. And so uh, everyone comes over and Spider-Man, because earlier when Spider-Man came back, Tony was like, come here, kid. And Spider-Man's like, Tony, look, well, uh, you know how we're in space and we withered away? Well, Doctor Strange, we must have passed out or something. Because Doctor Strange came back and you were gone. He's like, come on, they need us. We showed up. And Tony just walked over and gave him a big hug. Because Tony was, like, uh, missing Peter the whole movie. He had a picture of him and he was like, hmm. So um, Spider-Man came up to him and he's like, Mr. Stark, we won, man. We're going to be good. And then Pepper, uh, he's starting to cry. And Peter starts to cry because you know what's happening. I know what's happening. I'm trying not to cry. The whole movie theater is already crying. And my sister, she's right next to me. She's crying. And uh, I'm, I was starting not to cry. I was holding it in. And uh, I could feel it coming. But I was like, stay down. Be a man. And so Pepper comes up. And um, she's like, you can rest now. And he's dead. Tony, Tony, Tony died. So then... Um, after that, the scene ends to Hawkeye going back home to his family, who came back when they snapped their fingers, because when Hulk snapped the fingers, that's how everybody came back and made the battle, and, well, actually, the Avenger appearance, really cool. And, um, it shows Hawkeye going back to his family, and Black Panther back in Wakanda with his mom and sister, and then it has Tony Stark doing a voiceover while it's showing Black Panther and Scott back with Hope and Daughter, and... He's going on about how, um, Tony's going on about how, uh, if you had told me ten years ago that we saved the world, I wouldn't. He was doing one, he, he, I can't speak, Iron Man 3, he did, uh, you know, a little speech at the end. This is the way he did it, it was just different. And then it shows back to the Avengers, oh no, actually it wasn't all the Avengers, it was Happy, Pepper, I think Captain America, and his daughter sitting on Tony's couch. 
And Tony made a hologram right before they went to space, and that's what they were watching it. And he was sitting there in a chair, and he was talking. And he was like, you know, this whole time travel thing that we're going to do tomorrow, in case of an untimely death, which his death wasn't timely, no one saw it coming, people were still crying. And, um... His final, his final words of the hologram, he gets up off of his chair through the hologram that he was recording himself on. He gets down, and he looks straight at his daughter. I don't know how he knew his daughter was going to be sitting in the exact same spot, but he did. And he says, I love you 3,000. Ends. Ends. That, that's what made me cry. I was like, Bruh! tears came out, and I was crying at the movie theater. And it shows to, um, they put him in his grave, and they put a bunch of flowers and stuff. And stuff on top, and then on top of all the flowers was the little arc reactor that Pepper gave in the very first Iron Man movie. You know, the arc reactor with the case that said proof that Tony Stark still has a heart. Um, that was on top of his grave, and that's what made me cry even more. And then it turned, and it shows everybody, all the Avengers, everybody, just standing in front of it, watching him go. And I was crying, man, I was crying. So yeah, and then Happy was talking to his daughter, he's like, you like, che uh, what do you want for lunch? And his daughter's like, cheeseburgers. And Happy's like, well no, your dad liked cheeseburgers. And Happy was like, I'm gonna get you all the cheeseburgers you wanted. And I was like, oh god dang it. So after that, Thor went and he joined the Guardians of the Galaxy like the Infinity War. He joined the Guardians of the Galaxy and Star Lord was now okay with it. He was like, just like, no, I'm still in charge. And Thor's like, yeah, you know. It was funny. That part made me stop crying and started laughing. And then Captain America, um, he was on a mission to go back to the time portal thing to return the Infinity Stones. But he returned the Infinity Stones back the way they were, but he also made himself so he could age. So when he came back, he was all old and stuff. He was, he was an old man, because he made himself stop aging, so in that point in time, the present, he was an old man. So Falcon and Hulk walk up to him like, Cap, you okay? And he's like, yeah, I just wanted to try the normal life that Tony talked so much about. And I was like, God, oh man. And so Falcon was like, it means no more Captain America. And Steve was like, I know. And so he gave his shield to Falcon, and he pretty much declared Falcon new Captain America. And so then it goes back and it shows like this old, the old, you know, 1900s music. And it shows Captain America and Peggy. Uh, Captain America wasn't old, and Peggy was still young. They're still the ages they were in the first Avenger. And shows them dancing, and then just ends. And that was Infinity War. Uh, not Infinity War. Endgame. Yeah. I just said the whole movie in half an hour. I didn't mean for it to be this long, but it was a movie review. So, my review. I loved it. I loved it. I can't wait till it comes out in DVD. I'm going to be the very first person to buy it. Yeah. I'm going to be the very first person to buy, um... Endgame. Well, probably not very first person, but I'm going to be one of the few people to buy Endgame. It was really good. Um, the the final battle was probably one of the best final battle pieces of um, Endgame. Well, not Endgame, but the whole MCU. And it was it was the best Avengers movie out of all three of them. It was really good. And now, we uh, and that, that was supposed to wrap up all the whole 11 years Marvel was making those movies. Endgame was supposed to wrap it up, so of course, no more Iron Man, no more Captain America. Who knows what to do? Maybe they'll make an Avenger, Avengers movie of the people they have left. You know, Spalkin's new Captain America, Pepper's new Iron Man. Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, I loved it. One of my favorite Marvel movies of all time. But also the saddest. But, uh, yeah. Just, just, my thoughts. I'm not in it. But other than that, that wraps up this video of, you know, Avengers Endgame movie review. If you have seen it, tell me what you thought about it in the comment section down below. If you haven't seen it and I just spoiled it for you, sorry, but I gave you a warning to, you know, get out of here. If you haven't seen it yet, don't want me to spoil it for you. So if you stay, you want me to spoil it for you. Your fault. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please don't forget to leave a like in this video or any other video. Comment in that comment section down below. And of course, if you have not subscribed to the Trusty Gamer uh, channel, please do so if you've not already. And of course, I'll see you guys in my next Trusty video. See you later, my dudes!